Good day and welcome to the UFC 172 conference call. Today's conference is being recorded. At this time, I would like to turn the conference over to Mr. Dave Schaller. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone, and greetings from Baltimore, Maryland, the site of this Saturday's UFC 172, featuring the light heavyweight title fight between champion John Jones and number two ranked contender Glover Teixeira. Both John and Glover are on the line today. In addition to those two gentlemen, we have Phil Davis and Anthony Johnson, our co-main event stars. Today's call is going to get kicked off right about now, so operator, let's open it up. Star 1, if you have a question, star 1, and we'll wait a second here while we queue. Thank you. And once again, star 1, if you'd like to ask a question. And we can start with Heidi Fang from uh, MMA Fight Corner, operator. Thank you. Please go ahead. Hello, thank you for the time. Uh, obviously, I'd like to start right away with the uh, main event here. I'm uh, curious, John, uh, coming off of the fight against Alexander Gustafson, you went through a tremendous amount of adversity in that fight. Uh, was there any moment for you in that fight with Gustafson where you had to gut check and realize, wow, I might have everything slip away? And how did you mentally rebound? Um, your question was, was there any moment in the Gumpson fight where I felt as if I had lost everything? Yes. Um, yeah, you know, going into the fourth round, I realized that the fight was really close. And um, I realized that I needed to switch up my strategy um, and uh, begin improvising a little bit more. And that's what I did. You know, I, I think with Gus, I was I was trying to fight a, a, a technical kickboxing match. And uh, I think I was losing at that. So I uh, I just had to switch my style up and, and uh, start flowing a little better and uh, and start, you know, winging things, making up, creating, finding new openings. And uh, and that, that led to that big elbow and, uh, you know, a few other techniques that was kind of spare the moment things that were working for me, some flying knees and stuff like that. And being the champ, you're always the hunted one, as it is right now. There's kind of a line going for you. Everybody's gunning for you, obviously, in the division. How do you manage to keep focused on Glover with knowing that Gustafson is lying back in the wings? Oh, it's, it's easy to stay focused on Glover, you know. Uh, just looking at the guy's record. I mean, the guy, uh, the guy, is, uh, the guy hasn't lost a fight in five years. Um, you know, he's beaten 20 people in a row. Uh, he's obviously a very special fighter. Um, so, uh, I know in order to defeat uh, such a magnificent fighter, I need to be on my game. I need to be even more magnificent than he is. Um, in order to do that, um, I need to be completely dedicated, focused, and have a great camp. Thank you. And for Glover, uh, is there anything about the lead up to this fight that has made you feel maybe underestimated, being that a lot of fans are talking about maybe John Jones versus Alexander Gustafson as the next fight? Yeah, they, they got to talk about that. You know, Jones is a champion. You know, he's been a champion for a while. And, uh, you know, every, every, I mean, most people are going to favor him. I never, I never really see a champion winning that much and, like, they favor the, the challenge, you know. I mean, and uh, I think I did my job. I, I worked so hard for this fight, and this is my opportunity over here. It's a dream, and uh, it's uh, Saturday night uh, to see what happens. Thank you. And just one last question for Anthony Johnson, if I could. Obviously, it's uh, probably very important to you to get back to fighting in the UFC. Do you feel that there's a lot of pressure on you to make an immediate impact coming back? No, I don't feel like there's any pressure at all. And uh, how do you feel in this new weight class at, at light heavyweight? I mean, is it a relief for you to not have to worry about cutting so much weight? Yeah, I mean, mentally and physically, it's, it's great for me not to have to cut so much. Um, but, I mean, I feel awesome, and uh, I'm just ready to get it done. I've been training, it seems like, forever, so <laughs> I'm just ready to get out there and do it. Great. Thank you so much for the time. Hey, Anthony, how much you weigh right now? 215? How much you weigh? That's about 10. I'm 220. Oh, hell, you bigger than me, fat boy. <laughs> hey, I bet, I bet y'all sexier than you, though. <laughs> we can have a contest with that. Let the ladies decide. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> Operator, you can cue up the next question. It's uh, Damon Martin from FoxSports.com. Thank you. 
Uh, my first question is to uh, to John. You know, John, for, for a while there, you know, a lot of people were talking about you going to heavyweight and maybe a super fight with Cain Velasquez, but it seems like the light heavyweight division is kind of filled back up again with contenders. You got Alex, obviously Glover. Uh, you got, you know, Daniel Cormier out there. Now you got Phil and Anthony Johnson. I mean, do you feel like this division is going to keep you interested in staying at 205 for, for quite some time now? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I, I answered a question similar to that uh, earlier today, so I was asking about possibly fighting Campbell Esquez. And, uh, I, you know, I answered to that. I have no interest at this point. You know, there's a, there's a lot of great competition for me to test myself against. Uh, you know, Glover Fisher obviously being uh, first on that agenda, um, what a great challenge he'll be. Um, you know, people are interested in rematches. I got Phil Davis uh, saying he's going to crumble me like a cookie. Uh, so, yeah, I mean... Uh, Lots of competition left for me, and uh, I'm excited to meet them all. What do you? What do you, I, you know, I kind of asked you this when I talked to you the last time, but what do you think about you know a lot of the light heavyweights being a little more vocal? You know, when you when you first became champion, outside of maybe outside, I mean, you had some personal stuff with Rashad, but I mean, you know, it was a pretty you know a pretty good line of guys that, that showed you respect. But it seems like lately, guys are kind of coming after you a little more, not necessarily personally, but kind of coming after you saying they can beat you, they found the weakness, whatever it is. Uh, do, you, do you pay attention to that? Is it, is it kind of weird that now it seems like there's a long line of guys all, you know, kind of vocally gunning for you? Um, you know, this is the thing I realize when it comes to that. Um, when guys actually have the contract signed and they're the one who's next in line, you know, they, they tend to show a lot more respect usually. Um, when the guy's not in line and he, he knows he won't be fighting me for at least a half a year or whatever time it may be, um, it's easy to sit there and chirp and say what you would do. So, um, I, I tend not to take him that seriously. Yeah, your your last fight against Alex was was such an epic fight. It was really the you know the first time we saw you really tested in a fight in terms of actually being in trouble maybe a couple of times. Does that does that put any extra not necessarily pressure but kind of an onus on you this fight to really want to go out there and and dominate Glover? Uh, because again, the last fight was was so good, but I, I know you've had such a dominant style that you've really not had to worry too much about being in trouble. I mean that 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 fight tested you, but is there a statement to be made against Glover to, to kind of prove that? Yeah, Gustafson pushed you, but but that's not that's not who you want to be as a champion. You want to go back to those dominant kind of one sided performances you have been having. Uh, yeah, definitely. You know, I um, I definitely have uh, got right back to the mindset that I had. You know, going into um, um, you know every fight that I've gone into. You know, every every fight I go into, I have an idea uh, of of finishing the fight. You know, I don't like going into fights and and uh, fighting uh, all five rounds. I'm totally prepared to fight for five rounds, but um, my goal in this fight is to dominate the fight um, in a way that no one uh, seemed possible. Um, you know, uh, domination is in my psychology. It's, it's the way I train. It's the way I eat. It's the way I visualize. It's the way I believe. And, uh, you know, um, you know, if I don't dominate the fight, um, I'll still be happy with the victory. Um, but domination is what I'm planning on. And a, and a question for, for Glover, uh, you know, Glover, you obviously have been on the radar uh, of fans for a long time from being, you know, Chuck Liddell's sparring partner back in the day all the way to your, your current streak. But do you feel like, you know, this, this really is the best time for you to, to be where you're at? It took you a long time to get to the UFC, but now with the streak you're on, do you feel like this really is the best time for you to face a guy like John Jones? Yeah, man, you know, this, this is the best time. I mean, I'm uh best, uh, best shape of my, my, my life, you know. I always train hard for any fight, man, for any fight. And, uh, and John is no joke. You know, it's like, uh, it's, I mean, this guy is like, when I say satisfied to, to beat him more than, uh, because after Chuck Liddell, he's the only guy that holds the belt for, 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 for so long, you know? And, uh, and beating him is like, uh, like Chris Lightman get the credit to beat Anderson Silva, you know? So, uh, you know, beating like, a like a great champion like him and like train so hard and, and I train so hard, but so happy because every day I wake up in the morning, I'm like, man, man, I'm fighting for a UFC belt. This is, this is great. You know, I'm just going to the gym and train really hard. Yeah. And you, you know, having trained with Chuck and been around Chuck for so many years, I know he's been a great friend and, and mentor to you. Uh, but, but having been around that and seeing him at his highest points and, and being around those moments, I mean, did that help you at all, you know, getting ready for this fight in terms of mental preparation? Because let's be honest, being in a title fight, main event, that's a big spotlight to put on yourself. But even though you haven't fought for a title in the UFC, you've been there. You you were there with Chuck during his, his greatest days. And I feel like that maybe could be a, 
a big influence and it helped you. I don't know. You tell me. Yeah, you know, Chuck is always, you know, I mean, I met Chuck like a long time ago before he was a champion. But, you know, I see him the way uh, he respects all his opponents, you know, the way he put himself together and like uh, the way he go in the, in the cage and try to finish fight show to excite the fans. And that's the way I learned, you know, how to fight, how to to do most of the things. But Chuck stay out of my train and mostly, you know, he say one thing and the other, you know, how I should be this. Like, he see what I do and like, he just saying something, but he he, mo- he leave most of the stuff with John Hackler. You know, he's the one uh, doing my train, and uh, but Chuck is you know he's a great, just a great friend, man. Awesome, thanks a lot, guys. All right. <clears throat> and as a reminder, it's star one. If you would like to ask a question, next we'll move to Ken Tishna with MMAWeekly.com. dot com. Hey guys, thanks for the time. Um, just for Glover real quick, um, it seems like even though you, you've you uh, amassed a really stellar record and actually a record very similar to John's as far as your success rate, uh, but, but it seems like you've kind of flown into this fight under the radar a little bit. Is, is that how you look at it, that, that maybe fans aren't looking at you as, as quite the same um, caliber maybe as like Gustafson and Jones right now and has that kind of taken the pressure off for you? Has it been a good thing? No, I, I, don't, I don't think either way the other, man. I think uh, you know, the fans uh, you know, they know Jones more than you know, he's, he's been a champion he's defended his title a lot of times and uh, of course you're going to go for him. I knew that, you know, before this fight uh, was announced I knew like when I fight Jones Jones this was going to happen, you know, and I don't really care. I just got to prove uh, they wrong, you know, to prove that I uh, have a potential to, to become a champion. And for Phil, real quick, um, almost along the same lines, you had a lot of success in this division and, and rolled over a lot of opponents, but it seems like you're not really getting the credit um, as far as it comes to getting a title shot. Do you feel like you've been kind of overlooked and, and you need to come out and maybe make a statement and say, hey, look at me, guys. I'm here, too, and I, I've really amassed a good record, and I, I deserve a title shot as much as uh, these other guys. Um. Yeah, you know, uh, I, I try to let my friend do the talking, but I'm going to have to let my talking do the talking for a little bit. And, uh, and uh, the fighting, fighting is cool. I, I take care of itself. So, um, I mean, it doesn't matter if I fly under the radar for a little bit. Um, shouldn't be for too much longer. Do you feel like in this age where it seems like a lot of fights get made once, there's a lot of noise made out in the social media and stuff like that, that maybe you need to start... Uh, you know, jumping into that mix and, and making some noise outside of the cage, too, so you get the fights that you want? Uh, yeah, you know, I guess that's, that's part of the game. I definitely can't uh, neglect any of it. So uh, that's just, uh, just going to be the next next step. And real quick for John, um, I, I don't think most fighters want to go five rounds, especially if you have to take some punishment along the way and absorb that and then... And even though you had a miraculous fight with uh, with Alexander Gustafson and, and ended up on the winning end, how even though you don't necessarily want to take that type of fight, you know, have that kind of fight, how important was that for you and your career and your growth as a mixed martial artist? Would you mind asking that question? Wow. I'm Hello? I'm, yes? Would you mind asking that again? I'm sorry. Oh, no worries. No worries. Um... I, I was just saying that I don't think most fighters want to have to go five rounds and absorb, you know, damage along the way, even though you did overcome that against Alexander Gustafson and, and eventually win the fight. Um, but how important is having a fight like that to your growth as a fighter? Uh, it's very important. You know, uh, it, it's, uh, it's one of those fights that make you more confident in your cardio and uh, it's more confident in your heart. You know, and, and uh, you know, I had uh, I had finished a lot of fights uh, fairly fast, and I think it, I think it, I think it was more important for the fans too just to see that I have uh, that I have the heart. You know, when when things get ugly, when things get nasty, uh, that uh, that I'll be there, and that uh, I won't disappoint, and that I'll fight with uh, with all my heart, all my soul, and every ounce of me uh, to remain champion. 
you know, we had saw glimpses of it uh, when I fought, you know, uh, he took Alfred armbar me, you know, and being a champion means so much to me that I was going to let him break my arm. Kill son and uh, I broke my toe. And being a champion meant so much to me um, that that I was willing to continue fighting, you know, not even realizing that my toe was broken. So um, it was great to see those little glimpses of, of heart and, and my my will. Um, but after that question, but, you know, I'm even more confident in my will. Um, I know I have a lot of will. And uh, I know that I'm armed with that going into this battle on Saturday night. All right. Thanks, guys. And next, we'll move on to Karen Bryant with MMA Heat. Hi, guys. Thanks for taking the call. My question is for uh, Rumble. You know, a lot of your posts and things on Facebook, on Twitter, a lot of them are really positive um, about your comeback and a sense of there's a kind of an I'll show them feeling to, to some of the things that you're writing. So I'm curious, are you still getting pushback from fans? Do you still have people, you know, kind of bringing up old things about not making weight? Do you still, are, are people still giving you a hard time about what you used to do in the UFC? Anthony, you still on? Yes. Yeah, my phone cut out at this conference. Oh, sorry. So what, what was the question? Sorry, I missed. Everything. No, Rumble. It was just it's um it's just about you know a lot of the things that you're writing on Facebook and your and your Twitter messages and stuff. Kind of a very positive tone, but also kind of an I'll show them feeling to them. So I'm just curious if you're still getting pushback from some UFC fans who think about the old Rumble who didn't make weight. Are they still giving you grief about that? Is that is that why you feel that you need to put these kind of messages out? No, I just do it, you know, uh, the messages that I get, my my aunt actually sends them to me just for motivation, you know, and uh, I just feel like I can share with the world and hopefully it'll, you know, lift somebody else's spirit up besides mine, you know, and uh, anything positive I'm always down for. So that's why I do it. And as far as like, you know, people saying anything about the weight, when I see it, I just smile about it. You know, it's, what can I really say? I brought it on upon myself, you know, I, I admit that. So it doesn't bother me anymore. Okay, great. And with knowing that, that you brought it upon yourself, obviously you're in a different weight class now, but when you look back, do you, do you see the error of your ways? Do you see what you were doing wrong? Um, you know, did you, did you have to make a mental change in your life or was it purely just physical things that you weren't doing right, you know, to get yourself to fight at the right weight and to just really get comfortable with where you are as a fighter? Uh, it was everything pretty much mental. Um, it was just a mental thing. It was never physical. It was always mental. And mental in that way, you were just defeating yourself before you got there? Or, yeah. Or, yeah. yeah, I was just making, you know, dumb choices and not, you know, doing things the way I needed to, you know, just young and dumb and not caring, really, you know, as much as I should have. I, could, I can't say I didn't care because I did care, but, you know, my head just wasn't completely in it. Okay. And, Phil, for you, on the flip side of this, uh, you know, it's been a while since you've had a fight, and then this one got announced as co event with Rumble. How do you feel about welcoming him back? Where do you see, you know, where do you see him as a dangerous fighter? Oh, well, I'm glad I get to fight uh, Anthony Johnson. You know, he's a dude I've been watching for a long time. Actually, a dude I've been a fan of, so uh, it's actually uh, a cool opportunity. Um, and I think he's going to fall over because he has a lot of experience. There's, there's nothing, there's no real big holes in this game. All right, great. Thanks, guys. And next, we'll move on to Gareth Davies with the Daily Telegraph. Good afternoon, uh, Anthony. Phil Cabrina, Glover, and Jonathan Dwight. Uh, thank you very much for um, giving us this time in Fight Week. Um, could, I, could I ask um, Phil Davis, first of all, Good afternoon, Phil. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, um, in the last couple of Dana Media scrums, Phil, um, I did, it was either in Quebec or, or Orlando, I can't remember now, a bit jet-lagged right now. Um, the Dana had said that one of the problems with Phil, he wasn't kind of specifically talking about problems, so one of the problems with Phil, he said, is he's too laid back. He doesn't put pressure on me. And Dana went on to speak then about how Ronda's always putting pressure on him. She wants to fight all the time. How do you respond to the fact that he's saying you're too laid back? Well, well listen, okay. Um, if that's what he said, that's what he said. I'm not going to argue with the man. Okay? Some of that, okay? But how I feel about it 
is if you walk Phil Davis calling and texting your phone every day telling you want to fight John Jones and beat up whoever the champion is, that's fine. My phone just wanted to get it done. That's not that's not necessarily so, okay? It's really really just a uh what do you call that? A, a miscommunication. So I'm just gonna make sure I have to do what I gotta do on Saturday. Then I'll call out whoever's the champion after Saturday night. Simple as that. Do you feel you're doing enough talking inside the octagon at the moment, then? And that's what you're saying, basically, yeah. So? Wait, wait, what? What was the question? Do I feel like I'm enough talking? You, what is, are you just, what are you saying that you really just need to do your talking inside the octagon? You don't need to go out there kind of uh, rumbling around, putting pressure on to get a title fight? No, I'm saying precisely the opposite. I'm saying enough talking inside the octagon you got to win, you got to look good winning, and then you got to tell everybody you're going to break apart John Jones. And that's, that's that. Brilliant. Thanks, Phil. Appreciate that. Thank you. Well, um, well, well, yes, sir. Well, well, thank you. John Jones said I was going to break him apart like a sugar cookie. That's not exactly correct. I promised I was going to break him apart like a sugar cookie. Big difference. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, I, could, could I ask... Um, Glover, um, Glover, um, where do you see, um... Yeah, Phil. Phil, that wasn't nice, bro. <laughs> what's, up, what's up with you, Phil? <laughs> Phil, what's, when we become, when we become like this? Wait, why do you have to think about it for so long? Hey, that wasn't nice. <laughs> when we become like this, Phil? That's, that's Remember, we, that's Remember we hung out at Lionheart? You used to chill. Hey. We went out together. I remember that. I thought you went to a bar and you was only 20 years old. Oh, come on. <laughs> what? what? Bro, I'm, not, bro, I'm not giving up you on you, Phil. Up. You brought it up, man. Listen. I'm not giving up on you, Phil. I'm not going to give up on you either, sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> That's not nice, bro. Uh, Phil, are you waiting? Are you just sitting there waiting and developing the opportunity to to, to rip John Jones apart, basically? Yeah. Pretty much. Pretty much. I shouldn't say well, whatever. Whatever Glover leaves left, you know, whatever Glover do to him, I mean, hey, I, I, I'm not responsible for that. Glover's going to do what Glover's going to do. I'm, I'm I'm worried about that as it is. But I clean up whatever's left. Not nice, Phil. You're welcome. <laughs> you, nice. you, I don't know whether to interrupt you guys or not. Um, I, I, I wonder. Did you? What did, I'm going to keep on with Phil here. Phil, what, what did you? What's your assessment of what happened in the Gustafson Jones fight then? Funny you should ask. I was going to chime in. Um, well, here's what happened. John Jones came out and he was doing his thing. Was that a snicker, John? Okay. Anyhow, John Jones came out doing his regular deal. And Alex, because Alex and I, we, we trained to get some things to do. I said, Alex, listen, man. What you really need to do is you need to strong arm him like an American. Get him with a backhand pep swap. I'm telling you right now. Alex did through seven different kinds of smoke at this dude. John Jones didn't know up from down when he was fighting Jones. Uh, I mean, Alex. He didn't know what hit him. He didn't know why he hit him that hard. Why he was hitting so much? Uh, I honestly still don't understand really how he lost. But I will say this: John Jones came back the, the last two rounds, fourth and fifth round, came back like a like a champion. Um, did he do enough to win? Absolutely not. But look, hey, when you leave it to the judges, leave it to the judges. I understand that. I was understand that. We talked about it. He's gonna come back stronger. Hey, Phil, question. But I will tell you this. Seven different kinds of smoke. John Jones was on fire. Seven different kinds of smoke. Hey, Phil, can I ask a question? Go ahead, ask me a question. Uh, what rounds did you feel Alexander won? I thought he won all the ones where you put them hot hands all over your forehead. <laughs> oh, man. That's not, that's not nice, Phil. Hot hands, though. You put hot hands all over your forehead. Not nice. Not nice. 
Anyway, gentlemen, I've got to interrupt because I know you're arguing amongst yourselves here, but I've got to move on to the next question. But thank you very much, Phil. I think you answered Dana's question there in a big way. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, Glover, are you still there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm um, just laughing. Brilliant, brilliant, guys. I'm going back to that Gustafson fight. You will have watched it yourself in studying, um, in preparation for John. What did you learn about John in that fight, and did you pick, perceive weaknesses for your game plan? Yeah, I learned that John's a, a lot of fights, man. As far as I, as far as I come to your see I've been watching John. You're always watching the champ. You're always watching the guy that you want to you want to challenge one day, you know, I watch it, I always fight uh, live, you know, you know, TV or, or all day, but like, uh, I'm watching this guy's fight, you know, and that fight, uh, you know, he just show, uh, he show little stuff, but like, taking from the stuff, so is 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 different, because uh, people say, oh, what you learn, like, you can do with Gustavus did it, and, and did that or this, but like, uh, Gustafsson is a different style, you know, me and Gustafsson, we have a different style, so... We're going to do different things, and uh, John's probably going to do different things to uh, in my fight. But the um, only thing I learned, like he said himself, man, he can go uh, he can go to to the deep water and come back, you know, and he, he's, uh, he's a true champion. And that's, uh, that, that gives me more motivation to train really hard for this fight than know this fight can go five rounds. One of the things you will have seen on Saturday night in Orlando is that uh, most people were kind of tipping Travis Brown to to to, to, to go through um, Fabricio Verdum, and yet Fabricio fought. Uh, I, I think probably well, it was in, it was a stunning performance, frankly. Um, did you take? And, and most people are kind of not writing you off, but seeing you as the, as the big underdog in this fight. Um, this is MMA, and anyone can win. Um, it, depending on the night and the styles. Um, did you take something from that on Saturday night as well? What, the Verdun and Travis? Yeah. 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 Uh, no, man, you know, it, just, it was a fight. I thought I thought Verdun was going to win, you know. I had uh, trained Verdun before, and, uh, you know, I thought he was uh, he, he was really tough. And I, I knew it was going to be a tough fight, but uh, I thought... I thought uh, I thought he was going to take him down and, and to meet him, but, like, uh, he beat him in his feet, but, uh, you know, and the night, like, he, he uh, Travis breaks his hand, so... You never know, but listen, um, I thought uh, the Verdun was going to win, so he did. And and um, and, and finally, Glover, um, did, did you you know you you heard Phil Davis uh, delivering some some words to John Jones? Can you speak directly to John Jones now and let him know what you're going to do to him on Saturday night? Yeah, uh, he knows. He knows my style. I mean, he knows I'm going. I'm going over there, you know, and the track in this fight. All, all respect for Don Jones, man. Uh, like I say, he's a great champion. He's a, he's a great guy as well. I mean, I don't hang out with him too much, but uh, as I see, he seems like a, a great person. But like, uh, uh, on Saturday night, man, we're going to take care of business, and uh, he's going to try and knock me out. I'm going to try and knock him out, and uh, that's what we're going to do, man. And uh, I'm excited for that. And, and finally... Um, a question for for John. Um, uh, John, um, I just everyone else is 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 giving their opinion on what they learnt about you in the Gustafsson fight. What did you learn about yourself in that fight? And and you talk about domination on Saturday night. Can you talk us through how you're going to dominate? Are you there, yeah, John? Um, you know, the biggest thing I learned for myself is uh, you know that. Uh, you know, is that I'm game for war, you know? I'm game for it. Uh, like I said, no fighter uh, wants to have fights like that last fight. You know, obviously, I'm um, getting punched in the head and, and you know, I have a, a way of permanent scar now over my eye and stuff like that. You know, nobody nobody wants to have fights like that. Um, but, you know, it was about time for me to, to have one of those. And uh, it was good to know that I, that, I, uh, that I can play that game and that I can win that game. Um, and as far as the fight... Uh, this Saturday night, you know, I just, I feel good. I just feel good. I've been eating healthy. Um, you know, I have more confidence in my ability to go the distance than ever. Um, you know, I love, uh, Gustafson, man, he, he's looking good. You know, a lot of people, um, are considering him to be the best out there and I've, and I've already beaten him, um, which, you know, makes me more confident in being the best. Um, I, I think I'm faster. 
I think I could be equally as strong as Glover. Um, you know, I might not have the most missions in the history of the light heavyweight division. Um, or even in the jiu-jitsu category, I feel as if if, if it becomes a jiu-jitsu match, I can play jiu-jitsu with them. Um, my ability to scramble, um, my just overall quickness, my unpredictable strikes, my, my takedowns from the clinch, my takedowns from the shooting. I, I just, I mean, I just feel good. I feel, I feel confident. And uh, I believe it's my time. And uh, so I don't have any doubts in my mind. I, I just uh, I feel like a winner. I feel like a champion. And uh, I've been in shape for a long time now. And I've just been waiting for a long time. And, and I'm excited to go out there and play the game. Gentlemen, thank you very much indeed. Huh. <clears throat> and a final reminder, if you'd like to ask a question, please press star 1. Star 1 to ask a question. And next we'll move to Ben Zwizik with Daily Mirror. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Thanks for taking the time. Uh, first of all, I'd like to start with uh, John Jones. John, um, Obviously, uh, your last fight was quite controversial. Looking back at the fight, did you perceive any technical tactical word? Could you ask? Could you ask the question again? When you yes, um, after your last fight, did you see Alex Allen behind? Uh, one more time, sir. Uh, um, yes, did you perceive any uh, weaknesses in your last fight, uh, technically or tactically, and had you tried to address any of those uh, for the global fight? What weaknesses did I see in my last fight? Uh, in myself? Did you see Alex telling you behind? Because that's what I saw. Everybody seen it, John. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, wait, Phil, give this guy a second. Ask this question again, because I didn't hear him. Sorry, John. Um, yeah, I, I asked what weaknesses you perceived in yourself during your last fight, and if you managed to uh -huh. correct any of those during training for this fight. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's it's hard to say the weaknesses that that I saw. You know, um, I thought I, I thought I saw good. You know, but uh, Dusty Shane just exploited a lot of things in my game. You know, he uh, he um, he just did a, he did a tremendous job. You know, and. Uh, I can't really call them weaknesses on my part per se. Um, I just think he he just did really good in some in some ways in some some aspects of the fight. So um, you know, I really focused on the on the good things about that fight for me, and um, I think there was a lot of good things, a lot of great moments for me in that fight. Um, but Gus just had, had, uh, had a great fight. And uh, obviously, you've uh, had a bit of a war of words on the social media and uh, through uh, through the MMA media. But um, Gustafson has said that he's certain that you're going to win your fight on uh, UFC 172. Are you concerned at, at all that he will be preparing for you now rather than, uh, and that'll give him an, an, an advantage uh, when you do meet? Uh, no, I, I'm not concerned about what Gustafson is doing at all. Um, you know, right now I'm focusing on Glover. Um, you know, it, it is actually. It's actually kind of sad that me and Glover haven't had a better chance to promote our fight because uh, everyone's so concerned with Gustafson. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm really focused on, on, on Glover. And uh, I know that uh, that Glover, you know, he's, he's a winner. And I got to be 100% focused on him in order to beat him. So that's what I've been. And, um, and uh, yeah, I think everything with, with uh, Gustafson will come in time. And, uh, you know, me and, and both being 26 years old, uh, us fighting again is inevitable, so I'm not really worried about uh, that right now. And well, well, you, you're I mean, a question. we all saw that you were scared. Did you? What have you done to overcome your scaredness? Did you? Did you get a nightlight? Do you sleep with a teddy bear now? What do you do? Um, I uh, actually do sleep with a teddy. I do sleep with a teddy, Phil. Did I answer your question? No. Okay, and uh, John, you're, I mean, you're, you're, your next opponent is Glover, obviously, and he's known for his his boxing and his knockout power. Are you trying to steer the fight into other areas, or are you confident you can throw hands with him? Uh, I, I'm confident that I can stand with, with Glover uh, for sure. Uh, he has uh, great knockout power, uh, and, and it is left hand and in his right hand. 
I've studied him and, and some of his favorite combinations uh, extensively. Um, and uh, I feel like I'm ready. You know, uh, Glover isn't the first fighter that I fought with extreme strength and, and power. Uh, Vitor Belfer, his, uh, his straight left is, is scary. Um, Leo Machia, um, his knockout power is, is scary. Uh, uh, Rampage Jackson has amazing knockout power. Uh, Shogun Ua with his overhand right. He's, he's some people that, um, you know, uh, Brandon Vera's leg kicks and his Muay Thai clinch. Um, I mean, the list goes on and on. Uh, I've fought on a lot of guys with, with extreme power um, and extreme strength. Um, but what the key is to uh, to limit uh, their opportunities to swing on you like that. So uh, I'm ready for Glover's pressure. I'm sure he's going to come out right away and try to pressure close the distance. Uh, and I'm ready for that. And, uh, and I'm ready to go out there and just be uh, unpredictable. Well, the last one... Hey, you could handle somebody in the striking department. Alex hits you so many times in the right eye, you almost turn into a pirate. I'm just so sure you can be better than Glover standing up. Because let me tell you, I don't seen Glover before. He throws heat. What are you going to do? Good. Good. All right, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. Uh, answer your question. Uh, yes, thank you. And if I could have just a quick question with Glover. Um, now, you're fighting somebody with unusual reach, uh, both in his arms and legs. Uh, have you brought in specific training partners to help you deal with his uh, John's range? Yeah, we did some, some training to kind of avoid the range. Hello? Hello? Yeah. yeah we, did, you know, we did a little all, all training for that, man. but that's what, that's my style already, no matter you know, I get in the... Yeah, close distance, you know, and uh, and uh, you know, I just walk all around, man. I'm confident in everything, you know. Uh, confident in my boxing, my kickboxing, my uh, my wrestling, my my jiu-jitsu. So, you know, I just get in the, over there and uh, and do the job. I'm a I'm a MMA fighter, and like uh, I'm confident, man. I'm very confident for this fight, man. And, like um, John John is a, he's a great fighter, but that's uh, that's his time to pass the the belt, man. That's uh. And so maybe he, he take a maybe he take a rest without the belt for a little bit. And uh, obviously, uh, John's got a very strong wrestling background. Are you confident you can defend yourself from uh, from your back against um, you know quite devastating ground and pound? Yeah, you know I train with the guys. Uh, I mean, John is he's definitely like a, he's all around too, man. People say about like how you avoid the reach is like a. The reach is a, uh, but the thing is, like, I, I answer this question many times. He's uh, he's a champion. He's definitely not because he's rich. Because uh, he's a champion because he's good. Because uh, I see a lot of tall guys, linky guy, come to the team and then never even make to UFC. You know, and I see a lot of even taller than him. But like, uh, he's just like like I say, man. Um, his techniques against techniques. You know, it's my skills against his skills and. Uh, and I believe in my skills, you know. Been doing this for for a long time, and uh, this is my time. Man. I'm just happy to go over there and uh, excited, realize my dream. Okay, gentlemen, thank you very much. Oh, and next we'll move to Brad Akamoto with ESPN. Hey guys, thanks to everyone on the call. I have just a, a few quick questions for for John. Uh, John, I don't know if you'll be able to answer this question or not, but when you look back on your career, uh, in some ways, uh, do you feel like the win over Gustafson was your most impressive victory? Obviously, it was your closest one, but is it the one that kind of uh, you're the most proud of at this moment, or, or would you pick uh, one of your more dominant fights? Uh no, no, I'm, no, it's not the one I'm most proud of. I, I think it was, I think it was, uh, it was a big fight for my legacy. You know, it was a, it was a big fight for the fans. Um, you know, right now people are considering that one of the greatest martial arts battles of all time. And I mean, to, to be a part of the greatest of anything of all time is always a thing. Um, people are considering the fight of the year, um, which is a huge honor. Uh, so I'm grateful for that performance uh, in so many ways. Um, but uh, I don't think it's the greatest performance in my career, no. Um, I, I think I could have competed much better. I could have had a much better training camp. Um, so, and with that being with that being said, also have something Alex for showing up and having a great performance. Um, I think that could be Alex's great, greatest performance, but certainly not mine. Um, I would have to say my 
my one of my favorite performances is uh, against Leo Machida. Uh, Leo Leo is a guy that a lot of my uh, original coaches would uh, would say to me, John, you you got to go to bed early because uh, you got to beat Leo one day, or John, you got to learn how to fight in the southpaw stance and in the orthodox stance because you know you got to be smart and be able to do this in order to beat Leo one day. And John, you got to learn how to kick better because you got to beat Leo one day. And you got to learn how to block because I'm gonna be about Leo one day. So. Uh, whether he knows it or not, I mean, Leota was my dream fight. It was it was the guy I trained to beat uh, since my my UFC debut. Um, so that's that's the performance I'm most uh, proud of, to be honest. Uh, outside of being Shogun, obviously for the bill. Okay, well, thanks for that. And then my last question was, you know, that at UFC 165 when you fought us, it was that there were a lot of Swedish fans in the crowd. They were they were booing the decision, and I actually remember some things flying down from the crowd. And I'm just wondering, obviously, you were in. Uh, you know, you were in, in a sort of different state at that moment. But do you remember at, in that fight or any other fight in your career? Have you ever had a crowd member like throw something at you, like a, a beer can or or anything like that? No, I've been really fortunate not to have that happen. Okay. <laughs> all right. Thanks a lot. That's all I have. I'm gonna move on to Stephen Morocco with USA Today. Hey, John. Um, a couple weeks ago at the at the media day, you uh, you thought that Phil was trying to build his name by uh, mentioning you and, and sort of uh, chirping at you in the press. Um, I'm wondering if his behavior today motivates you to fight him more down the road. No, it, it doesn't. It doesn't. You know, I uh, I have not been through playing a guy like Phil. Um, you know, I've already proven myself against a lot of amazing martial artists, and uh, and uh, I think, that if anything, you know, Phil's kind of uh, embarrassing himself uh, with all the antics. I mean, um, but... You know, it's what he's deciding to do today. Um, you know, I'm a champion, and uh, I'm a champion, and, uh, you know, I fight the top dogs, and I've, my whole career has been in the fast lane, and I'm not going to sit here and, uh, and belittle myself by entertaining Phil. Um, you know, at first I thought it was funny, but, I mean, it's just silly. And uh, I'm fighting uh, Lover, and he's fighting uh, Anthony Johnson, and uh, I need to really stay focused on that. Uh, on, uh, I'm Glover. Um, you know, Glover's a, he's a great challenge for me. So, um, you know, I, I just think, uh, when you, when you talk like that and you, uh, you, and you be so goofy, uh, it puts more pressure on you. I mean, what if he goes out there and get caught with a, one of those high kicks from Anthony Johnson and gets knocked out? I mean, it's going to be really embarrassing to talk so much trash to me and then I'm getting knocked out by Anthony Johnson. So, uh, I'm going to keep my mouth shut and, uh, stay focused on what I'm here for and that's Glover. Is it frustrating that the topic is, is so often about other people besides um, besides your opponent um, leading up to this fight? Is it, is it frustrating to hear all the trash talk from other people? Well, you know, the, the, the topic of uh, conversation uh, leading into this fight is is is, is and, and the questions that you're asked are very frequently not about your actual opponent, but about other people. Is that, is that frustrating to you? Right. At all? Well, the only thing that's frustrating about it is it, it creates a. a uh, it creates a perception of me overlooking Glover, which is not fair because I'm not. Um, there was actually an incident where Coach Hackleman, uh, uh, you know, kind of, you know, spoke against me because of uh, the fact that I'm forced to answer questions about uh, Alexander. So, you know, I want to go on the record and make it very clear that, I, you know, I'm in no way, shape, or form uh, overlooking my opponent. Uh, I'm just being asked these questions and answering the questions. Um, know that I study my, my opponents uh, tremendously, uh, extensively, and uh, that I'm taking this fight very seriously. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. And our final question, we'll hear from Raul Aldaga with Premira Cora. Hi, guys. Thank you for taking Hello. Yo. Hello, yes. Raul, your phone is breaking up really bad. Can you go ahead and try again with that question? Okay, thanks, guys, for taking my call. This one is for, for Glover Teixeira. Uh, usually, when two sluggers get into the octagon, like yourself and, and John Jones, the fight doesn't usually stay upstairs. It usually goes to the ground. How good is your jiu-jitsu uh, to face uh, a good wrestler like John Jones who likes to ground and pound? 
No, it's pretty good, man. You know, I um, you know, I have I have visits to missions. I have some uh, some excuse on the ground, and like uh, you know, of course, the fight. I'm probably gonna go to the ground this fight either way. You know, you take the Jones down and down, or you know, standing. We we still have because we both like this. For this fight, I think it's gonna be a good fight. I think it's gonna be a great fight. I hope it'll be a great fight because. Uh, uh, we both know so much in, in all aspects, you know. And I want a guy like, oh, he's really good. Like, uh, um, he's really good stand up, and I'm really good wrestler. But, like, we we both, like, uh, star. I mean, I star in, uh, in mixed martial arts. Like, uh, I, when I start jiu-jitsu, I already start boxing, and I already start, you know, learning some wrestling, uh, full MMA, you know. I'm not, like, a guy that comes down from, like, uh, I'm jiu-jitsu champion or, and like I become MMA fighter later on, you know, like uh, I'm confident in all aspects. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And at this time, I would like to turn the call back to Mr. Dave Schaller for any additional or closing remarks. Thank you, and thank you to all the media who participated on today's call. Thank you to the four fighters as well. A very, very big week for us here in advance of UFC 172. Tomorrow, UFC light heavyweight champion John Bones Jones will be on live with Kelly and Michael. So that will be an awesome appearance for John. On Wednesday, we have media availability at the Coast Coast, and that will be Hyatt Regency in Baltimore. And that will feature Luke Rockhold, Tim Bolch, and several other fighters. That begins at 1 o'clock. That is closed to the public. Again, media availability on Wednesday. Beginning at 1 o'clock, it's Rockhold Boach, Miller, Yancey Maderos, Joseph Benavidez, and Tim Elliott. On Thursday, we move to the iconic Camden Yards for UFC 172 Ultimate Media Day. That begins at 1 o'clock. The four gentlemen on today's call will be there along with UFC President Dana White. And then Friday, we go to the weigh-ins at Baltimore Arena. Start things off at 2 o'clock. We have Q&A with UFC Hall of Famer Chuck Liddell. And then we go to the weigh-ins at 4 o'clock. Thank you to everybody who joined us today. We will see you in a couple days here in Baltimore. Have a great day. And that will conclude today's call. We thank you for your participation.